Thank you very much, Dr. Conradi. And they say you could always, you can always rely on a German voting system. <laughs> Perfect technology that never lies, but 101%. <laughs> Okay, I think we're kicking off with a short movie here. No, we don't have the movie, so I'm gonna go straight into talking about Ryanair. Um, so I'm gonna talk for about 25 minutes, um, and I'd love to open it up to some questions um, at the end of the presentation, and I think then we're gonna take a second vote. So my name is Kenny Jacobs. Uh, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Ryanair. I've been in Ryanair about 14 months and I'm responsible for demand, which is just making people want to fly with Ryanair. I'm responsible for marketing or sales, uh, digital and customer service. Um, Ryanair, it's a great story. 30 years ago, um, Ryanair started its first flight from a town called Waterford in the south of Ireland to London. It was a maverick pirate airline. The Irish government, Aer Lingus, the Irish airline, the EU, Dublin airport, everybody wanted to shut this airline down because they thought it was bad news. It was a challenger that was going to disrupt and make their lives more difficult. So that first Ryanair flight, customers paid for the flight in cash, which was collected in a bucket uh, as customers departed. 30 years later, Ryanair has become the biggest airline in Europe. It's the biggest airline in Europe that this year will carry over 90 million million customers and next year will carry over 100 million customers. Ryanair today has 73 bases. Yesterday here in Berlin we just announced that Berlin would be our latest base and it's our 73rd base. Um, we have 1,600 daily flights. We fly to over 30 countries, over 1,600 destinations. We have 320 of the same 737 aircraft and 10,000 people work at Ryanair. And since we've started 30 years ago, 750 million people around Europe have traveled with Ryanair. So it is a great example of what's good about Europe. Ryanair is about helping everyday Europeans get around Europe for less money. And 30 years ago, Traveling from Dublin to London, for example, used to cost you about 400 euros. So what we do is good. It's a good thing. And we're very proud to be celebrating that 30 years later. Um, this is the coverage that we have across Europe. One of the key advantages of Ryanair is the 72 73 bases that we fly to, is the 189 airports that we fly to. We really represent the new map of Europe, and we have much broader coverage than any one of our competitors. If you contrast Ryanair with EasyJet, EasyJet have 25 bases. So we pretty much operate across nearly every single country in Europe. Um, when you look at this in terms of market share, we're the number one in Europe with 14% market share. The big one that stands out is where we are today, Germany. We just have 4% market share. So we want to get to 15 to 20% market share in Germany um, by 2019. We're the number one airline today in the Republic of Ireland, in Spain, in Italy, in Belgium, and in Poland. We're the number two airline in the UK, and we want to be the number one airline in almost every market we operate in across Europe. Over the next five years, the three big growth areas for us will be here in Germany, will be Scandinavia, and will be the Eastern Mediterranean, which means Cyprus, which means Greece, and eventually means Turkey when they open up their skies. A um, couple of key numbers on this slide. The, uh, where we're getting to by 2024 is a fleet of 520 aircraft carrying 160 million customers, which will be 100% growth in the next nine years, which is our business plan. Um, this is what Ryanair is all about. It's about having the lowest fares. And I fully agree with statement number one, because we've gotten to become the biggest airline in Europe by having the one thing that customers want, which is the lowest fares. And we believe that you need to be great at one thing. And what we're great at is keeping costs down. By doing that, we keep fares down. And that's why customers have voted with their wallets and made Ryanair Europe's biggest airline. When you look at our fares versus our competitors, you can see that our average fare last year was half that of EasyJet. When you see our average fare versus Air Berlin, it's, uh, it's a third of the average Air Berlin fare. Lufthansa aren't really competing with us at those fares of 235, and Air France and KLM with an average fare of 300 are also not competing. Um, this is gonna continue to change in Europe. 
Uh, every country in Europe now gets that low-cost travel is really what people should be doing when it comes to short haul. If you're flying from Cologne, for example, to New York, it's a totally different experience. You're eight hours on an aircraft, you want to watch some movies, you want to have a drink, you want to have some nice food, you maybe want to work or sleep. That is a totally different product and a totally different experience than flying to Cologne to London, for example. You are an hour and 20 minutes in, uh, in the aircraft, 15 minutes going up, 15 minutes going down. People really don't want to have that much excitement and that much luxury in the 50 minutes in between. And that's why they say, I'll just pay the lowest fare. People want a reliable airline. They want you to get them. They want you to take off on time, get there on time, don't lose their bags, don't cancel flights, and just have the lowest fares and the best choice of destinations. Um, what we do in Europe, if you take the 100 million people who will fly with us this coming year, paying our average fare versus the European average fare, customers choosing Ryanair will save about just under 12 billion euros by Ryanair being in the market. So this is what's good about what we do, and this is always been part of the Ryanair brand, but we are, more focused, we are focusing more on this type of story in terms of the savings we help our customers make. But we did need to make some changes. Um, about 18 months ago, uh, Michael O'Leary, our CEO, said we want to make some changes, and we do acknowledge that the experience of being a Ryanair customer was at times a little difficult. And we've, over the past year and a half, gone on a big set of improvements to improve that experience. Ryanair as a brand was very outspoken. Sometimes we were too outspoken. It was, the fares were absolutely great. The choice of destinations were great. But families, business travelers, and customers around Europe, they did want more. Digital had changed things a lot for customers. People wanted a website that would work on the move, on your mobile device. Customers wanted a better boarding gate experience. They wanted to bring two bags on board, for example. And so we've changed. So I fully agree with statement number one. It is about having low cost. It is about having the best choice. But you now need to have the best experience. And on this slide, I think somewhere along the way, Ryanair became kind of like the sheriff of Nottingham, if you know the Robin Hood story. And what we've done in the past year and a half is getting back to where we were originally, and that is being the Robin Hood in the airline category that's actually, we're there for everyday people. So my marketing model is, is really, really simple. It's this, Ryanair is a really, really functional, useful brand. And what we're now about is just becoming even more useful. Um, at the same time, I want to make us more liked than we have been in the past. I don't want people to love Ryanair. I want people to like Ryanair. Lots of marketeers say, oh, I want people to love my brand. Yes, you can love Ro Rolex, you can love BM BMV, you can love Hugo Boss, but short haul air travel in Europe is a functional experience. What you want to hear your customers to say is, nothing went wrong, the fare was good, I'm here, and it was effective. So I want our customers to like Ryanair, and I want Ryanair to be different. Uh, a lot of people in the past year and a half have said, yeah, you guys used to be nasty and we didn't like it, but please tell me you're not gonna be boring. Um, and we're not gonna be boring. We are still gonna be quite outspoken. You will not think that we are the biggest airline in Europe because we want to have a really good spirit, we wanna be very pro-consumer, and we wanna have some fun along the way. This is how we used to look. Um, this is pretty much a brand that is quite incoherent, and this is the transition we've made uh, in this past year. <laughs> so the first thing I did was buy Michael this puppy, um, and it's really transformed. It's really made him a nicer man, and uh, that puppy comes along to all of the board meetings, and uh, actually it gets, a, it gets a vote in all the decisions that we're making. I think the transition you've seen in the, in the past year is we've, we've really focused on Ryanair, low fares, made simple. We've really worked on the experience that our customers get, and it's worked. It's given us an appetite for change, and this week in London we just announced the second year of our Always Getting Better program, which will launch 15 initiatives that will make Ryanair even better for customers. But we're not there yet. There are still people I meet who are customers who said, you know what, three years ago I had a bad experience and I'm not so sure. It will take time, it will take constant effort. We've made really good progress in year one. We're gonna make good progress in year two. 
but I know that we've got the best product. The best product is the lowest fares, the best choice of destinations, and the best schedule at those destinations, and we will constantly work at improving the experience. The rest will work for itself. Um, for me, change at Ryanair, I can kind of express in these following ways. We used to say we, we sell flights, and we now think we sell travel. And we're kind of positioning ourselves as a travel retailer which specializes in flights in the future. We used to, our marketing model used to be very much about new market expansion and customer acquisition. Just get people into the funnel, have them make a booking, and if they come back, who really cares? And now we very much want the same customers to come back again and again and again. So that's moving from an acquisition model to a retention model. We used to call the people who fly with us passengers. We now call them customers. And this is a big cultural change within the business. And what those customers did with us, we used to call transactions. And we now say, well, what's the relationship we have with this customer? What's the share of their travel wallet that we're getting? Um, I think what we're doing is tapping into the zeitgeist that exists around Europe. I think over the past number of years, um, and this can be different across all countries in Europe, but something is happening. Europeans are changing their view on how they should spend their money. Of course, this is linked to austerity, and you can see this in the growth of brands like Aldi across the UK, like the Hyundai, the car brand, like Primark, the clothing retailer, Ryanair, and Airbnb. The European zeitgeist is that being smart with your money is now a good thing. If you take Aldi in the UK 10 years ago, Aldi's a great German retailer. 10 years ago in London, shopping at Aldi was something people in London were ashamed of. It was, yeah, I've just lost my job. I don't have so much money. I've got to go to that German discounter Aldi. Um, and they probably would have shopped at Aldi and taken the food and put it into a bag from Tesco. Um, and now it, it's completely changed. You can go to Kensington and you will see you will see mums and dads who are pushing their very, their ki very wealthy kids in their wealthy buggies in Kensington talking about, have you tried the new Prosecco at, at Aldi? It's really fantastic. No one calls Aldi a German discounter anymore. It's just called Aldi. And Aldi for me is a really, really good example of, it started off just being pure low cost. They've improved the choice, particularly in fresh food. They've improved the brand and the experience. And in the past five years, Aldi in the UK has grown by 30% every single year. And it's the same with a lot of what I would call smart living brands. And for me, Ryanair is a smart living brand. I believe in the, I believe in the statement that is, don't spend your money getting to your destination. It's more fun to spend it at the destination. And we are a key part of that spirit uh, that is changing what people want to do with their money in Europe. Um, it's about developing Ryanair as a brand, much as Aldi have done, also what H&M have done and Ikea have done. So I think they've all followed a similar story. This is Ryanair, with, which keeps standing for low costs and low fares, but we will improve the choice that our customers have, the choice of product, be that the family extra product, the business product, or the choice of destinations we'll fly and then a constant focus on improving the customer experience. This is the Always Getting Better program that we launched um, 18 months ago with five key pillars. Fix the things that customers don't like, improve the travel experience, improve Ryanair Digital, develop the offer, and improve the brand and marketing. This is all about driving a better experience, which drives better customer retention. Better customer retention drives better returns for our shareholders. It's really that simple. Um, these are all the things that we've done in year one. So you can see those five pillars of the Always Getting Better program and the 18 initiatives that we've launched in year one. It's been a very busy year uh, at Ryanair. Uh, in this past 18 months, we've changed and we've launched more initiatives than an airline probably launches in a five-year period. It's worked fantastically well. We've gone from 81 to 90 million customers in one year. We've increased our load factor by 6%. Normally, an airline gets extremely excited about increasing their load factor by half a percent. That's 12 additional customers on every single Ryanair flight. Um, we've launched a new website. We've launched our first app. We've launched a family product. We've launched a business product that gives customers a flexible ticket. Um, we have partnered with Travelport and Amadeus on GDS. We've partnered with Google on Flight Search. And we've made some big changes to in-flight. Customers can now bring two bags on board, which is great for female customers and great for anyone traveling with two bags. And customers can now pick their allocated seat. So these are a lot of things that Ryanair said, we'll never do these. And we've done a lot of them. And we've done this because we've listened 
to customers. We've said, tell us what you'd like to change. Tell us what really pisses you off. We've looked at the competition in the airline category. We've also looked at what retailers do, and that's what's shaping our plan. But this is a Ryanair that listens to customers, that has said sorry for not giving customers a good enough experience. And I think a year later, customers would judge us by the changes we've implemented. And that's backed up by the way we've grown. And it's given us an appetite for further change. Um, so as I said, it, it really has worked. The key thing I want to call out on this is, while we've done this, and this is why, to answer the questions one and two, I think both are right. Because we've made this change in becoming new Ryanair, low fares made simple, but our unit cost per passenger, which is the key measure of cost within the airline business, has stayed flat. So because we've grown by 9 million customers, when you divide the investments that we've made in customer and marketing by the 9 million extra passengers, that unit cost number has remained flat. So shareholders love this new Ryanair because it doesn't mean more cost. It just means the same profits, better profits. It means a better experience for customers. It means better retention. So for me, both answers are correct. You can do both. You can be the low cost airline and you can invest in improving the experience. If you execute really, really well, you will get both right. Um, this is year two of the Always Getting Better program. So this week we've announced these 15 initiatives. Um, uh, we've announced a new customer charter, which I'm going to show you in a second. We are implementing new aircraft interiors. These are new designs to the existing aircraft, which will be refreshed. And these are very different designs for the aircraft that will start to arrive at the end of the year with the new Boeing Sky interior. We're also going to be rolling out new crew uniforms this year. We've launched a new USA website because we get so many visits and bookings from the USA. Uh, we're going to be further improving our GDS partnership and our partnership with Google. We are going to be changing our ancillary offer to make it more targeted and using the customer data that we have. We're introducing a new hold a fare feature where customers can hold a fare uh, for five euros for 24 hours. Um, we're going to be changing the travel insurance product. We're further reducing a lot of the fees that we have if customers uh, make an error and they want to change. So for example, if you arrive at an airport not having checked in, we're changing this fee. And if you forget your boarding pass, we're changing this. Very few customers pay these fees, less than half a percent. So it's not about the money. We basically want customers to do it all on their mobile phone going forward. Um, we're also launching a new in-flight menu. Uh, we have a brand new native app for Android and iOS coming at the end of March. And we're going to be launching a live fare comparison service within our own website. So if you are booking from Berlin to London, we will show you the Lufthansa, the Air Berlin, and the other fares on our website. We are that confident that our fares will win all the time. You can imagine this is something that our competitors absolutely love. Um, uh, and in September, we're going to be launching a personalized website. So the homepage in Berlin can be very different to the homepage in London. And we're going to get down to very, very personalized experience for our customers on desktop and on mobile. Um, this is what the new interiors will look like. So moving from the yellow to a more blue uh, effect. And the new Sky interiors, these come on the new Boeing 737 Sky interiors. They've got very flexible lighting options, which you can do great things with. And we're going to be changing these interiors quite significantly. Um, this is the new customer charter. So um, this is a big deal for us. And this is very much going to be the, the, the flag under which we stand. The always getting better plan for me is the map. And then this is the flag that we're trying to reach. This is our first real customer charter where we make eight promises that always getting better is the way Ryanair does things. We promise to have the lowest fares. We promise to have the best choice of destinations. We promise to always prioritize safety. We promise to strive to make your travel an enjoyable experience. We promise that we'll always be Europe's most reliable airline. We promise to be transparent and to make travel simple for you. And we promise to innovate and make your travel exciting. So this new charter is is going to guide a lot of the way we do things. There's a set of very detailed promises behind each point, as you can see behind me. You would expect that value, you would say, OK, yeah, Ryanair is good at value. Choice, safety, reliability, these are all things we're very, very good at. I think the key things I would call out on this are, Always getting better suits us. We're relentless. We move quickly. There's a great sense of urgency in Ryanair, and we're very ambitious. We want to become potentially the world's biggest airline. Um, and we want to do that in a way, and people say, 
Uh, yeah, and it's, they're really good at what they do. It's kind of like IKEA is really reliable, Aldi is really reliable, Ryanair, they do exactly what they say they would do. That's a Ryanair that li listens and is very transparent. We also want to innovate, innovate. We've innovated a lot this past year. There's a lot of things that we had to catch up on, particularly on mobile and on digital, but we've now caught up with our competitors. And I think by the end of this year, I would expect that the Ryanair website would be the best website of any airline in Europe. And that's a big statement that Ryanair would not have made in the past. Before we would have said, if you've got the low fares, it doesn't matter if your website's pretty shit. Now we're saying we're going to have the low fares and the best website and the best mobile app. Um, and we want to make it enjoyable. Um, I don't want to get as far as the word love, as I said, I want to get as far as the word like, because travel, short haul travel in Europe just needs to be straightforward and enjoyable. So Ryanair in Germany, and this is, this is the day after an exciting day as we just announced Berlin as our 73rd base. So we're only 4% of the market here in Germany. We used to be bigger. Um, we withdrew some of our capacity here in Germany when the German government introduced travel tax because it puts 15 Euro, euros on every single return flight, which doesn't make it that economically viable. So we and every airline operating in Germany would want travel tax to be removed, um, and we will keep reiterating that uh, point to the German government. Uh, it has been implemented in a lot of European countries through austerity. Since then, Belgium, the Republic of Ireland have removed it, and the UK is currently starting to remove travel tax, and it's proven to be better for business and better for inbound tourist numbers, and the tax from those tourists who come to a country raise more money than the travel tax raises. Today, uh, we've got six bases in Germany and we fly to 13 airports. We have 10 million customers uh, this year supporting 10,000 jobs and German customers who choose to fly with Ryanair save over 1 billion euros compared to the fares of competitors here. We've got good coverage on the map, but we want to grow significantly in Germany. That statement was backed up by what we announced yesterday in Berlin. So from this October, we're going to be basing five aircraft here in Berlin. There will be 16 new routes, giving our customers a choice of 22 routes uh, from Berlin this winter. That will uh, add 1.8 million new customers onto the 0.8 million customers that we've already had, totaling to 2.6 million customers to and from Berlin. That's supporting 300 direct Ryanair employees based here in Berlin and about 2,600 other jobs that will be supported by Ryanair growing at Berlin. And customers in Berlin alone will save over 304 million compared to the fares of our competitors. And we expect this to grow. We expect to add to this new schedule even more so. So Berlin is going to be a big focus for us. If you take the next year, we're saying we're across Europe, we're going to grow from 90 million to 100 million customers. Schoenefeld alone represents um, 1.8 million of that 10 million. So Schoenefeld alone in the next year is going to be 18% of all of Ryanair's growth across Europe. So it's a really, really big deal what we announced um, yesterday. Our competitors are nervous. Anyone who is a customer or who's going to become a customer should be happy because you're going to get the lowest fares and you're going to get the most reliable airline in Berlin and across Europe and you're going to get the best choice. The routes that we've announced yesterday, it's not just sunshine. It's very much a schedule suited towards business travelers and frequency that suits business travelers as well. Finally then, on transatlantic. We are int very interested in doing transatlantic. Um, we think it's what's essentially going to happen in the European market is that more and more the Lufthansa's, the BA's of this world will focus on long haul because short haul competition is too intense with low cost airlines. Um, but Competi low cost competition and transatlantic would be a great thing for Europe. We don't need to do it. We can get to 160 million customers without doing transatlantic, but it is something that we're very interested in. There is no reason in five years' time an American airline can't be flying from JFK to Cologne Bonn Airport and that those customers can't be then getting, connecting within Cologne Bonn Airport and getting on a Ryanair flight to come to a Berlin, to come to a Rome, for example. So I would fully expect that the, the, the real grip that the big high-cost airlines have on transatlantic will come to an end at some point quite soon. It's quite interesting when you look at Germany that a country with so many airports that anyone flying transatlantic in Germany, and Germans love to fly transatlantic, you still essentially have to go to Frankfurt, Munich or Dusseldorf if you want to do this. And that's not something that's good for customers. So we would expect to look at transatlantic in two ways. We are still considering doing our own transatlantic airline, which will probably be 
something called something different, brought to you by Ryanair. It would have standard seats and it would have premium economy. And we would look to do this at a, at a good scale, probably connecting over 10 airports in Europe to about six airports in the United States and having a very, very strong frequency. In addition to that model, we are also looking at doing connections with uh, American Airlines that would fly to new airports uh, across Europe. Um, so that's it in summary. So the lowest costs will continue and new, nicer, friendlier Ryanair uh, has the same low cost than we've had before, which is great. Improving the, the customer experience drives great growth. Um, as I said, we've, you know, our customers save money and the customer number is growing significantly. Um, GDS and our new airport strategy of basing ourselves at more primary airports is giving customers great choice. The new aircraft is the platform for growth that we've needed. So we've got 320 aircraft today and we have 380 additional aircraft coming over the next nine years. Always getting better is a good way to describe Ryanair and it's what we believe in and it's the strategy that we've followed for the past year successfully and we'll continue to follow it because it makes our customers happier, it makes our shareholders happier and it makes everyone who works at Ryanair happier than they were before. So that's it for me. I'm happy to take questions if there's time. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, Kenny. Well done. Great message and way to stay on it. Uh, of that 11.7 billion euros that everyone is saving to spend more on where they want or, or where they want to be rather than how to get there, what percentage of that do you guys want to get that's not retained or new passenger business for flying, but ancillary revenues from digital products and other types of products that everybody seems to want to be getting into? Um, I, well, we want to do it. I, 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 we don't have a number that we'd say that's what, we want to, that's what we want to get. The way I would describe it is we said we sell flights and we'll do what every other airline does in terms of have accommodation and have car hire. Um, when you're booking travel in Europe, you come to a, a, an airline website first. So that's why I want us to become a travel retailer, which specializes in flights, but also does a lot more. We can do car hire and we can do accommodation better than we do it today. There's also a lot of other things that we can do. If you are a family going from London to Lanzarote for a family holiday, we can help you sort out, book restaurants, book theme parks, book different things at the destination. If you're going to London for a weekend from Cologne, you could book your theater tickets, your restaurants from the Ryanair website as well. So we are looking at, we are investigating a number of retail partnerships that we would add into the experience. Mobile helps a lot because if you go, if you get to that destination and you have our app on your mobile device, it gives us, it gives us a reason to keep talking to you. So I don't have a number on it yet. We're very interested in the area and a lot of retailers and new types of ancillary partners have approached us. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Murray Bailey, travel business analyst. In, uh, to me, one of the problems with Ryanair is you have a very high loads, a high traffic in the summer months and very low in the winter months. I mean, I think it's nine million in the peak months and then five million or something in the, week, in the low months. Are you doing anything about that or will this new program make any changes to that? And if not, if this new program will not help, what are you going to do about that big difference? For instance, Southwest has more or less a mm. similar pattern throughout the year, nothing like yours. Um, it's a very good question. We've actually changed it already. So if you take the, our, our summer's up here and our winter used to be down here. If I take the months of December, January and February that have just gone. If you take February, this week we've announced that in February we had 30% more traffic than we had the previous February, and in January we had the same. So we've already rebalanced the shoulders between summer and winter. We're grounding less aircraft. Having a more business oriented schedule means that in the winter months more business travelers are flying with us. So we've already made that balance. We were nervous about that. We're happy the way it's worked out, and we'll continue to do that in the year ahead so that the difference between our summer and our winter, it's more, it's more even than, than it has been in the past. Travel business analyst Rene from Singapore. Question about ancillary revenue. What percentage does the collection of the excess badge fees contribute to your bottom line revenue? And of all these exciting products that you are rolling out, the ancillary offerings, which are the most challenging to do? 
Um, you said excess baggage fees. Sorry, can I just, it was excess baggage fees you said? Collection of that, and what, how does it contribute to your? Okay, yeah. the, it's, it's a very, very small, it's a very, very small number. The excess baggage fee in terms of the contribution to ancillary revenue. So it's 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 not that material a number that I, I know it off the top of my head, but I know it's it's a number not worth remembering. It's that small, um, so it's not a big deal. Um, as I said, on ancillaries, we we we've seen our ancillaries revenue grow this past year, and we wanted to grow further. As we have customer data, it's a very, very, uh, you know, for me as a former retailer, I've spent more of my career in retail than I have in the airline business. I don't think airlines are that good at using customer data to drive ancillaries. So if you know a customer doesn't have a driver's license, why would you try to sell them car hire? Um, and airlines continue to do that. So we're going to start to use our customer data to drive ancillaries in a more targeted way. Uh, that's something we'll do from the second half of this year, and we think that's going to be an exciting opportunity for us to make customers feel they're getting a better product and be happy to pay for it, um, and gives us more flexibility on the way we'll sell ancillaries in a more targeted way. You're right, Kosice Airport, Slovakia. There is one small shift in your strategy you didn't mention, and there is uh, entering uh, primer, thus expensive airports like Rome, Fiumicino, or Brussels. Mm. So question number one, uh, are you satisfied with development of your presence at these airports, and is this trend going to continue? We're very satisfied, um, and it's going to continue. Uh, over the next five years, about 50% of this growth that I've outlined will be at primary airports. What's changed in the market is, as the national flag carriers have contracted capacity, airports like Rome, Fiumicino, like Lisbon, like Athens, like Cologne, have said, well, we need new airlines and we need low-cost airlines because that that's what the people in this catchment area want. Um, if you look at Brussels Aventum, uh, where since, since we started, We've had load factors in the high 80%, and Fiumicino is quite similar. If you look at when we went back into, well, if you take Edinburgh and Glasgow International to London, which we're doing four times daily, and it's primarily a business schedule, uh, since we've started there, we've had load factors in the high 80%, and we're taking share off all our competitors, including Easy, EasyJet, BA, and Virgin. So it's working, and it'll continue to be part of, a key part of our strategy. Hello, Albert Vieira from Flylines Brazil. Um, I want to know which plan you have to South America. We, we, we don't have one yet. Um, we don't have one yet. It's an interesting market. We know we, we know a few bits about it. Um, I think I think the USA feels like the next place next, um, and then probably a few other places. The Middle East becomes quite interesting, um, and then probably uh, and then probably South America. Hi, it's Paul here. Um, will the DMOs will become your partners for the future in selling products on the territory? For example, um, experiences, um, activities, uh, ski pass, or things like that. Sorry, will who? The, t the DMOs will become your I mean, what's partners. An, what's an EMO, sorry? Um, distinction Management Organization. Which is what? Sorry, I don't know. For example, it, I mean, uh, the, the organization ah, dealing with products. Okay, sorry, on the, on sorry. The okay, I got it. Um, potentially, yes. Or we would look, I mean, we, could we create a platform where, where they could basically be part of and they could have their inventory? Yes, that could happen. Um, or we could look at doing it in a kind of an aggregated way. So, yes, we take that. Yes, we want to be able to give customers more things that they can book at the Ryanair website. That doesn't mean we always want to do it ourselves. We might just present the best option to do that. So we're going to be investing quite a bit in my Ryanair so we know more about the customer and we're going to be then serving the customer up great opportunities. But yes, we would want to be able to say, you're going to Berlin, these are the top restaurants that people like you have booked. If it's a family booking, we will say, these are great family-friendly restaurants and hotels and this is what our fam this is what Ryanair families do when they're in Berlin. And then if, if someone is travelling on business, this is what Berlin looks like for, for business travellers. So we are open to both models. We'll probably pick the more simple one, but yes, we would like to kind of have a platform where tourist authorities, where lots of people can kind of plug in, and Ryanair therefore becomes kind of like the Amazon of the European travel business. I think this is the last question. I'd better wrap it up. Hi. Okay, Christian Maskos here from XP Travel. Um, two short questions, actually. Um, I remember uh, during my student time, um, Ryanair was the only airline making it possible for millions of students to fly, uh, for Erasmus students, going back, visiting home. So will you be keeping um, cheap um, 
starting prices up and uh, cheap sale prices like now or maybe even go back to um, this one cent tickets um, you had in the past where I can remember complete classes for universities just flew for a party to Dublin or mm. to Palma de Mallorca with um, 30 people for 60 cents. Will we see this again? And the second question is, will you still provide um, airports like Düsseldorf, Wetzel, Frankfurt, Hahn um, within the next five or 10 years or maybe going back to Hamburg, Lübeck, Magdeburg, Kochstedt and try to be um, also serve smaller communities because there are also people living at interesting destinations for okay. many people. Thank you. Okay. On, on the first question, yes, we, yes, we will have some of those what I would just call really, really special fairs. So, for example, we have at the moment some 30 cent fairs because celebrating that we're being 30 years old. It's a great time to book at the moment. There are lots of fairs to and from all of our German airports for 9.99 and for 19.99. These are still amazing price points compared to any other airline. But on top of those, we are doing 30 cent fares, one euro fares on new routes just to really get the excitement going because lots of people just remember them. We, did, we, we recently launched Dublin to Copenhagen and we did 30 cent fares and basically you're just, you just, it just creates such social media hype and it gets into everyone's brains that wow, Ryanair has these special fares. On the second question, um, we will still be staying at those bases. I mean, we wanna, you, you always have to get a flexibility as you're developing and growing as a business. So that map of Germany and those airports that we operate, you can expect us to move some capacity around to suit what our customers are looking for. You can expect us to announce some new bases. You can expect us to kind of change the way we use the airport mix. But for us, it's about being low cost. That's about having the best airport deal. That's about having the best slots at those airports. There's only one airport now that we don't see ourselves operating in Germany, which is Frankfurt am Main, because you can't do a 25 minute turnaround. It's too expensive and they don't have enough slots for us. But every other airport in Germany and the mix within those airports between primary and secondary, we'll get that right for our model uh, in terms of low cost and also for customers. But we'll do it in a way that will allow us to grow from being 4% of the market here in Germany to 15 or 20 percent of the German market in a five-year period. Okay, thank you very much.